All right, guys, special edition of Market Mondays. Yes. So um, I know you know what's happening today. It's a very big moment in world history. Uh, a sold out show, by the way, sold out show at Royal Albert Hall for financial literacy. It's amazing. So here's the deal. This is pre-recorded. Yes. Yes. So don't throw a tantrum tantrum. In <laughs> yeah. we, we, it was either this or, or be up at three in the morning. That's it. Um, <laughs> but we wanted, it. But we, we, didn't, <laughs> we, we wanted to make sure that we gave you guys, you know, a show. Um, but obviously we got to get ready for our show tonight in London, which is a very, very important moment for us. Mm -hmm. um, so that does not stop Market Mondays, though, because Market Mondays is here. Rain, sleet, hell, snow, anything. So we're going we gonna to talk about some trending topics in the market. We're going to give you some information and um, we're going to get to it, man. I'm not going to waste too much time. Um, this week's episode of Earn Your Leisure, my guy Casting Over Brooks. Ooh, hey. straight, out of, straight out of Chicago and then via uh, Kansas, did he grow up in? Uh, he was Nebraska. in Nebraska, Omaha. His story is crazy. <clears throat> One of the ill stories you're going to hear. His life story is like emotion. I had no idea about any of this mm. stuff. It needs to be it's, it's, the, a, it's a motion picture. One of the craziest life stories I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. UTA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get that's those rights. That's a fact. <laughs> so that's a dope episode. He talks about how he, um, you know, overcame adversity to become a top selling real estate agent in Nebraska, which that's crazy. Uh, he also has a day, two daycare centers. That's mm -hmm. an interesting business. Some real estate play on both. Real estate play, um, content creator. He's really, really interesting. Very smart guy. So shout out to Casanova. That's out this week. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Eventful week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, we're heading back home shortly. Uh, before we go any further, I just wanted to let you know uh, about a great choice if you're looking to bank or invest. Mm -hmm. Ally is a leading digital financial service company with passionate customer service, innovative financial solutions, and our relentlessly focus on doing it right for both customers and our communities. Get with Ally so you can save, invest, and spend all, all the things that matter most to you. For everything we need, we are all better off with an Ally. Look yes. at my ally across there. He came with the three piece today. Clap it up for hey. him one time in the, in the chat. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> back. Yeah, this is a disclaimer. Don't buy this now, please. And don't take his work either. But let me tell you, y'all you. know how this works. Do your own research. Our content is intended to be used and must be used for informational purposes only. It's very important to do your own analysis before making any investment based on your personal circumstances. You should take independent financial advice from a professional in connection with or independently research and verify any investment information you find on our show and wish to rely upon whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise that's a disclaimer yes. some of some of our friends in this, in this uh investment thing don't have a disclaimer and there's been some feedback over it protect yourself at all times and at all costs at all times please please yes. safety first oh and the legendary uh halloween party that was amazing maybe that we can talk amazing. about that a little bit at the end but that was an amazing uh, experience yesterday shout out to everybody for the vip event Everybody that took part of the VIP event that was, was legendary. That was Shout fire. out to Tape London. Yeah. And then the Halloween party hosted by Terrence J. That was amazing, man. We packed He's an amazing it. MC, yo. <laughs> yeah, we he go. came in and got to it. Like, that was a, even for the audience, show up to the VIP events and the parties to see how a master like that takes over crowd. Like, as soon as Terrence got on the mic, I'm like, damn, I got to adapt that to my show tomorrow. Like, yeah. show up and show yeah. out. And he, Sha came, and he came with the Eastern Conference All-Star yes, team. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes. Austin Powers in the flesh. <laughs> shout out to B. Shout out yeah, to baby. B and Ty. Shout out to B and Ty. I shot like four music videos in there. I'm, I'm going, on a, going off. I'm going on a karaoke tour. The whole Rockefeller set. Boy. I got it. I got you. Shout out to you for the extra, extra private room. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, "What's this?" <laughs> oh, oh, with the with the uh, the one way glass members yeah. only. Yeah, members members only. I, I saw you back there, my brother. Members shout out to Dio too. Shout out to my brother Dio. Shout out to Dio. Absolutely, that was love. He that was that, love. He put that play together for yeah, us. Shout out to Dio. Yeah. All right, Ian. Anything you want to say? Uh, Stock Club. I'm sorry there will be no call tomorrow, but I will send you a voice on the Telegram. Uh, Dio invited me, so I don't know if we're going to the House of Royals or wherever, and then I may go to Perry. So, uh, no call tomorrow, <laughs> but we will be back next week and um, join the show tonight. It's going to be amazing. Trap and I are going to put on an amazing show. Now, if I made you money, please put yes in chat and wire some money to my bank account. 
please. At least. <laughs> that's, that's the at least. least. <laughs> please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. So let's get into this. Um, I want to start with probably the biggest thing that happened last week is Amazon. Mm-hmm. So Amazon, it was down 20% after hours, but then it rebounded. I think it finished the day down like 7%, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but missed its uh, its expected uh, uh, guidance. The guidance was lower than, than expected. Mm-hmm. Um, still profitable, still made a ton of money, yeah. but just missed Wall Street's expectations. And it dropped to a 52-week low. Like I said, rebounded mm-hmm. a little bit mm-hmm. from that. Um, but yeah, it's interesting, man. It, it really, um, you know, had a really tough day and it's been having a tough year. Yeah. Um, it's been having a tough couple years actually. Um, well, so now the stock market. Oh, been- are we going to get the, the, the dialogue and debate that we get about <laughs> sports? Well, oh, no, the sports we debate one. show is going to be the one. The sports debate show is. <laughs> so the stock the stock market is up for the month of October. Yeah, Dow's up eleven percent. Um, the Nasdaq is up. Even the other day, when when Amazon crashed, Nasdaq was up, S and P was up, Dow was up. But mm-hmm. so Am- Amazon was your pick of the year. Yes, it was. So I'll let you start off this conversation. Is, um, do you want to reverse that? Um, I'm not going to up here. Everest no. or down Everest. Yeah. So, it hit. <laughs> <laughs> which which way are we going? Ascension. Which way are we dissension. going? Yes, ascension or descension is key. Um, yeah, I mean, based on everything that I had read in my in my information, you know, I stuck by that pick. Has it gone the way I predicted? No, no. Um, do I still believe in the company? Absolutely. Um, so I, the the report the earnings uh, report was interesting, right? Because there was some like if you looked inside of it, there was some good spots, mm-hmm. but the bad spots were so bad that it got overlooked. So I'm gonna break it down by the numbers. And so a good spot, the revenue grew by 15. percent Anytime you have a business and it grows, that's great. The advertising, right, which is we said was going to pass Google at some point, was up by 25. percent The big pitfall was the operating income that fell by 49. percent Right. So For those who don't know what operating income is, can you really quickly explain to them what that is? I mean, is? I think the best way to say it is the money that they are taking in and how they're going to use it. Now, in for sp- specifically for tech companies, in inflationary environments, this does not bode well, right? And so yes. as inflation goes, the cost to do things to operate your business obviously goes up. And so when you see interest rate rise, you see, right, since January, if you look at the NASDAQ, the tech stocks have Taking a uh, descension. We're gonna stick with that word. <laughs> <laughs> most right, people so that, die riding down Everest or walking down Everest, right? <laughs> most, account, most counts die on a descension. Yes. Um, yes. So that 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 was huge, right? The earnings per share dropped right by an estimated forty five percent. So those those two things. When you're talking about operating costs and the earnings per share dropping, there you can see why a company like Amazon, which I still think is a top three, if not top two, companies in the world has such a negative quarter. Mm-hmm. The operating cash flow also declined by 25%. So like, now we're talking about three major factors of things that are like, all right, this is a rough quarter. But even Bezos, when they asked him about it, he was like, look, we're gonna have to really tighten the belt because the climate's about to get a little tricky. So those are three factors. You add on to it, one other thing that was almost positive and, and kind of got overlooked, but the fourth quarter revenue is expected to grow by two to 8%. Mm-hmm. Fourth quarter, obviously, we know is holiday shopping, holiday season. More people are in e-commerce. The only thing is that what they're seeing is that more people are going back into the stores. We thought that, obviously, from the COVID time that people were shopping online and it was a positive, but people are back outside, right? Mm-hmm. E- e-commerce numbers are not looking the same as they did when you know it was a lockdown. So all those things taken into account, I understand it. Do I still believe in it? Absolutely. Is it going to be the stock of the year? Absolutely not. It's still one of my top two or three companies, though. Um, the, the big thing I want people to realize um, is that even in a company when it's going down, if you wait for a great price to get in, everyone in Stock Club, please put in chat, what was the number I'll call for Amazon? Um, you can still make money on a heavy drop like that. So I, the fundamentals of the, of the company haven't changed that much. Their global market share dominance has not changed that much um when you have interest rates of course going up 
and we're now going through i think this ultimately will be a bigger recession when it's all said and done than 2007 2008 but Amazon is primed, no pun intended, <laughs> to uh, do really well once things start to settle out. Um, they could be a hell of a lot lower being in that tech space. They haven't fallen to the 70s or the 60s. 99 was like a good spot that we liked, got in. It's like currently like a 104. If you're holding it for the long term, you'll be good. Also, for a quick homework assignment, internationally, if you're going to order online from someone, who are the four biggest competitors of Amazon? Now, ask yourself, who's going to get the goods to you there faster than Amazon? No one. They'll fix the operating income. The, any money that they're losing right now, they'll fix going into next year. You're going to be really upset if you don't hold a stock through 2025, 2026. Yeah. And if you look at the, the climate of the world, like every country is trying to create a business that replicates Amazon. Mm -hmm. Right. And I won't give them the names because you gave them the homework assignment, but go look in China. Right. Well, we know that mm -hmm. company, but go look in yep. South America. There's another company there that has duplicated the business model of Amazon. And so they'll figure it out. I, I believe in them. Well, let me ask you this, Ian. You, you said a few times that your theory of two tech, two index um, if inflation gets, I think, to over eleven percent, then that's mm -hmm. right, eleven percent. Yes. Then that 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 is going to hurt your your theory. So why is high inflation bad for technology? Uh, especially when quantitative easing goes away, all the easy wins. Like um, for all my hoopers, like when we play on like a nine foot rim, we all look like LeBron. Ten feet, dramatically different. So that difference between having zero interest rates and being able to borrow money. Like, imagine if we, if I said, hey, come to InvestFast Euro, we'll give every entrepreneur $100,000 and you never have to pay us back. The upside for the entrepreneur is probably a 95% win rate. If we give 100,000 pounds away and say, hey, you got to pay us 25% back, now maybe only 30% of the businesses will actually be profitable as a result. So that arbitrage is one of the biggest reasons. Now, Apple, inside of that two tech, two index model, has worked well. That's why I would say pair with the top two. But if you're going through tech and you're looking at something that's 15th or 20th, it's not going to do really well. Because the, what the technology industry really has done has gotten venture capital, which has funded all of the ideas. And we haven't funded innovation. We've really funded the ideas that can get funded. That's why we have a whole bunch of social media apps. We could talk about it later. Now Jack from Square is looking to make another social media app, which I think is a mistake. But you're really playing an interest rate arbitrage game. So if I'm getting loan money at 3%, when I can find a way ultimately to sell advertising or a subscription to my user base at 9%, I'm playing an arbitrage game and getting the profit in between. If interest rates is high and no one's loaning the money out, it's really hard to win that game. So we are in a space where we need more innovation. And ironically enough, tech has not done a great job at making a bunch of innovation how we thought. Like when we were kids, I thought we would have flying cars by now. Yeah, Jetsons for sure. We're not there. Like Ray J is the only one still making scooty bikes. Shout out Lemon to Ray City. J. Shout out to Ray J. Legend. So we need more innovation. And I think now we're just going to clear the way for people to be able um, to get out all the bad companies and create companies that will actually have a real impact. All right. Fair enough. Um, so let's talk about this. Um, how are you able to predict the fall of better? Can we get the horns? Um, so three things. This is normally the moment where I would like pat myself on the back, but I, I want this to be a very instructional lesson. Number one, you always have to understand what the macroeconomic environment is. So if the economy, if the entire world is thinking things are going well. You have to dig and do, do the research and say what is wrong with the industry or the cycle that we're in. Because it's easy in 2020, 2021, everyone just to throw money into options, Forex, venture capital, angel, and think they're a genius. But you have to see when is the Fed going to stop funding this big bubble that they created. Number two, if you look at the hiring spree that Facebook went on, it's unsustainable. Um, the couple of times I've been to Meta's offices, they have some of the brightest people in the world. But if I'm looking at the balance sheet, 
they have hired more people than Apple and Google with an inferior product in comparison. That's a recipe for disaster. Um, number three, that date in which, so I calculated if, and this is a homework assignment for everyone, if we stay without quantitative easing for the next five years, what are the top two industries that would do well and which companies in tech will be hurt by it? Advertising is a really thin margins game. And I was in it before. It's part of the reason I got out. If you make a company $200 million and they won't even allow you to get 10% of it, which most ad agencies don't, on the tech side, how much money is Meta making if Ford makes $2 billion in a year off of sales? It's a horrible business model. If we walked right now in, into GM and increase their sales by $3 billion in one year, how much money should we get? I'm minimum going to ask that we get 25%. So I think the business model is broken. And then lastly, um, if you look at the Fang revolution, when that started, everyone in that Fang category ended up being better. The biggest issue in terms of leadership, and you talk about this a lot, Zuckerberg won't listen to anyone on his team in terms of how they should pivot. I really think they should have let Sandberg run Facebook he should have ran AR and VR, and they should have bought Square, a partner with Square, to do the payment and crypto side. But that would take all the control out of his hands. Um, so when I'm looking at leadership, even though Tim Cook is a tough CEO, Steve was a tough CEO, if you had a great idea, he would listen. As crazy as me and 19 can be when we have ideas, you guys listen. Zuckerberg hasn't listened to his team or employee base in a long time, and that's one of the reasons why most companies fall apart. And that was the final reason that I saw, okay, if he's trying, if we can be very honest, he has to go steal another idea. Mm. The first great idea was stolen. Every idea that he created after that were B ideas. And now that you have everyone blocking all of your deals because they don't like him, and Congress is constantly calling him up to speak on behalf of tech and what he's doing to society, that is not a good recipe for disaster. That's why it's really important to be innovative and not to copy because if now you're not able to copy anyone else's ideas, like how you did the Winklevoss twins, you're in trouble. He needs to build, build a team around him that actually will make some great um, innovation. He should have bought Tencent, should have bought Square. Mm. I can argue he should have bought Roblox. Um, Facebook Marketplace was good. Should have put an offer in to maybe buy some of those other applications that sell. Um, it was just a lot of mistakes made. Yeah, That's how I end up knowing. At the end of last year, when we named our stocks, obviously when I named Amazon, that same right, I, I thought Facebook was going to be the most important one, mm -hmm. just because the amount of money that he was going to be spending inside of the quote unquote metaverse. Obviously, they changed the name, and it was for that reason. I don't, I didn't know if people were going to believe in it the way that he did. Mm -hmm. And now, when you hear people, especially in the tech world, a lot of the CEOs, like if you watch their interviews and they get asked about the metaverse. Mm -hmm. It's very discouraging. They're man. laughing at him. They're like, they're like laughing, they're discouraging, they're mocking him. And so when you said he didn't listen to his employees, I wonder at this level, do you block out everyone at this point and just really believe and zone in on what you write? Because if you're doing, I think the, the investment is 50 billion over five years on a space that no one is, knows to be cares about. Or yeah, or even is interested in being part of. So maybe he's in his, he'll he create his own world, but like, yeah, this, this is a lot of capital. I, I mean, like the, the number one thing that people were complaining about in the metaverse is that the characters didn't have legs. If we're being honest, that metaverse product looks like Nintendo Wii. Has any of your kids said, hey, I just want to be in a metaverse. So we was having a conversation last night. People like the metaverse is the next wave. And I'm like, but Apple or Google will probably run it. And you have to, it's one thing. We had a conversation maybe a year ago and I won't say a gentleman's name. Uh, Rashad, you told me the gentleman had a very vile comment that he made to the person and it led to part of his downfall. I always remember that lesson. 2016, Zuckerberg made a super vile comment to Tim Cook. Tim Cook has been on his ass ever since to go out of his way. Apple's not even interested in AR and VR. But because you made an enemy with someone who too has an ego, Tim Cook, who was tired of being in the shadows of Steve. So if he was in the shadows of Steve, why would he let Mark Zuckerberg even lean into his lane and let you offend me when I didn't let Steve offend me? Let's go take their lunch just to be 
vindictive. And now, because, and I told everyone this will happen, now advertising is getting really big at Apple. Now they're going to start slapping ads all over that homepage of the App Store. What would you rather advertise your product if you're a business owner? On the iOS App Store or in Meta? Zuckerberg, I'm coming to save you, but you're going to have to listen and give up some billions. <laughs> <laughs> do what you want to do. But y'all got five more years. Like I said, February 24th is when I called the so death. What, 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 can, what, what can they do to... Uh... What can they do to uh, reverse engineer the situation? Give me fifteen billion, and then, then let the culture run it. First, first, Any other first ideas? Order I, I don't want to give. Shout out to everybody at, at Meta. I love it. And the crazy part, they have some of the best talent I've ever seen in the building. He won't listen to them. Huge mistake, man. Like even me. I didn't want to do stocks. Like my guy, Ty, shout out to Ty. He was the one who made me do stock club. I wanted to talk about trading. He's like, most people don't have the discipline for it. I could have said, no, I know this. I'm the mass investor. He was like, bro, I'm telling you, you put them into trading first, it's going to be a disaster. Set them up for long term, then weave them into trading. We got to take the ego out of it. Because even as leaders, and truth, we were talking about it last night with Jaleel, the truth about being CEO and running a business, it's not fun all the time. I know they see us moving around. And you think we're having a glamorous time. This is work. Anyone who is the chief executive for real, shout out Abdullah, shout out Christy, CEO, you are putting out fires every day. We as leaders have to listen to our employee base, our team members, customer base, more often to get the wins because all the genius and innovation is in there. The crazy part about Meta, they have about 14 to 15 people who have some amazing ideas that if they worked, or they were allowed to execute them, Meta wouldn't be in this position. Have to listen. But what do I know? But I did call on the 4th, 24th of February, Facebook will fall apart. Most company, and I'm going to say it, Zuckerberg is tech shield night. Incredibly talented, incredible team, but his ego will lead to the misery of that company. All Mike right. clipped that up. Chris we'll clipped see. that up. We'll monitor. We'll monitor the situation. Um, what stock do you believe is better than Apple? Man, I hate to say it, and I love my baby Apple. Right? I could argue though, especially if we're looking at beta. I think Eli Lilly hmm. probably is the greatest company right now in the entire stock market. Virtually why? no. Why? Great question. Virtually no drawdown, so the stock has not dropped. And regardless of what happens in the world, okay, so if, let's say we go into like a zombie apocalypse, which I pray never happens, are people going to really be worried about FaceTime and, and well, the cell networks are going to go down, but the healthcare space is still going to rise and do well. We've seen through COVID through, so we go through these hundred year cycles. Um, the Black Plague happened. And of course, um, the, the virus of, 1928 and 1918 happened. COVID happened uh, with cancer rates rising, healthcare rates rising, excuse me, um, healthcare insurance rates rising. That healthcare space is probably the safest space to invest in because people are always going to be sick. They're always going to need, unfortunately, in, in the Western civilization, they're always going to need some kind of medicine to help them. And Eli Lilly leadership is, reminds me a lot. I was talking to BD yesterday. They remind me a lot of like Dan Cathy's team. They're really quiet. They won't make a lot of noise, but behind the scenes, they're trying to find a way to own everything in that supply chain. But the thing about it is that um, Apple can go into healthcare. But they, Absolutely, they going, which they I predicted going, about the insurance. Yeah, they are going into healthcare, but they won't. They won't go into pharma though, because they don't want that regulation. Okay. But Eli Lilly can't go into Apple's. They can go into Eli Lilly's house, but they can't go into Apple's house. That, you know, Apple is, they can do anything. Apple literally can do anything. There's nothing, that Apple, there's nothing that Apple can't do. And the cash flow he, says that they can do it too. Eli, Eli, Lilly, Eli Lilly is extremely good at what they do, but they can't do everything. I think it's a mistake to try and do everything. We we see that with Zuckerberg and Meta. 
They try to do marketplace. They try to, they're destroying Instagram slowly but surely. TikTok's coming to take their lunch. Um, they're trying to do AR VR, fifty billion dollars invested. Huge mistake for a product that no one wants. Ad but I think it's also one thing with Apple is that you're right. You can't stretch yourself too thin. But mm -hmm. they they don't really they s s stick to a few things and they always dominate it. So it's like they start out with computers, but then they they start dominating that space, and then they go completely one eighty to music. Mm -hmm. People people just automatically assume Apple Music and like it's just so synonymous with music. But at the time, it was a revolutionary thing. Like Apple is a computer company that's going into mm -hmm. music. Apple dominates music. Like if you think about it, Apple is the biggest force in music. From mm -hmm. Apple Radio, Apple, Apple was the first culture vulture. Well. <laughs> So so now so so now they dominate they they dominate music right so now it's like they're very strategic in the areas that they go into so th there's talks of them going into the EV space there's talks of them going to the healthcare space so I feel like if they do decide to really put a plant in those spaces yeah it's going to be years of planning it's going to be extremely thought out and you know they don't really lose too often yeah, you for, you forgot I agree. Biggest, you forgot the biggest space communications. They weren't a phone company, but they dominate the phone company. Mm -hmm. right? And the app store. And, and you think about tablets, right? They dominated that. Wearables, forget about it. Beast by mm -hmm. Dre was a thing, and then they bought Beast by Dre. Great acquisition. But, he, but like and, I said, he, like the wearable he, space, the AirBuds, and now when they, you know, obviously the glasses are soon to come, they'll be dominating that space. But even online, the app store is an interesting thing, too. Because if you really think about it, that's market. that's an online marketplace for a variety of things, all things that you function with. I don't even know how to fully it's explain it. It's the greatest that. toll road ever. Um, And they dominate that space. 30%. Mm -hmm. They dominate yep. the space of, no, they get 30% of revenue, but I'm saying they dominate that whole space. Their only competition I'm is- saying if you got if you have an app on it. App, app yeah, they get the 30% no, no, they got everything. They only, the only competition is What's the Android thing called? Google Play. Exactly. They have no competition. Nobody. Either. I know. These are all points that I've made throughout the... Go watch every episode of Market Mondays if you want to be rich. Even two years ago, I predicted that we're going to the insurance space. I agree. A thousand percent. If we're looking at beta, though, everyone go Google. What is the beta of a stock? Eli Lilly's beta is 0 0.33. You want to be in businesses where the risk is very low. That is an amazing 2008, December 1st. The stock was at $29.38. As of today, it was at $359.90. Mm. Average volume 2.86 million shares per day. Yield is 1.09%. Earnings per share is 6.27. That thing is a cash cow. Yeah. And they're reporting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. so we'll get to see their quarter, uh, obviously, today. Yeah, uh, we had uh, who was it? Uh, CVS is on Wednesday. Then you had Stryker today, so the healthcare mm -hmm. earnings are going to be coming in now. So, we'll, we'll see. oh yeah, and for, I need to say for the record, I'm not replacing Apple as my top stock. It's still two tech, two index, the two tech or Michael Microsoft and Apple. But yes, in chat, if you've been hearing me say that since the very beginning of the show, I was saying this back in 2015. Stance has not changed, but I will say Eli Lilly in terms of how it's run. And if you're looking for lower risk, that beta definitely tells the story. Okay. I, and I'm, I'm going to say this too, historically, if you tune into the show, you don't need to listen to anybody else. We've been right on too much. We've told you Apple, told you Microsoft, called when a recession was going to happen in October, told you when Bitcoin was going to fall apart. We'll get to Doge in a second. Told you to reinvest in Doge at 5 cent. It's been up 95%. What more do you want from me? You don't need no <laughs> anybody. It's like essence. Shout out to WizKid. You don't need no you don't nobody, nobody else. And, and everyone who said, hey, a bunch of people said I was wrong about Facebook being a death of. Why don't I ever see any of them at the exchange or Meta or the meetings with Square or they have no meetings with UTA or Net? Come on. Everyone copied the model. I keep saying it. Follow the leader. Follow the leader. Shout out to Rock. Follow the leader. Shout out to. Oh, uh, the 18th letter. Shout out to Rocket. <laughs> um, 
Dogecoin is back on the rise. Is now the time to invest. The mighty, mighty Dogecoin. The oh, Doge father right. himself. The invincible Dogecoin. Um, I'm torn, but since Elon has retaken over control of Twitter, and I know the use of some offensive words have went up 500% since he's taken over. But let's, I'm going to stick with the financials, then we can go to the political. Um, I think everyone is wondering how he is going to raise revenue. If he owns that platform now, and even though he borrowed a lot of the money from the bank and he financed the the buy of Twitter, a still a loan that he has to pay off, I would not be very surprised if Elon puts a considerable amount of time into pumping Doge and a couple other crypto to push over the next couple of months. Um, I'd say maybe eight months ago, five cent and 11 was the price to get in. If you got in at 11, great. Five was even better. Um, I still don't like it as an asset class. For me, it's always going to be a swing trade. It's not a long-term hold. But for those of you that are getting in at lower prices, it'll be a good time to uh, get in around that five cent or three cent mark, hold it for maybe six, seven months. Is it ever going to take over how people thought it was? No. Is AMC or GameStop going to take over? Absolutely not. Um, but it is a good trade if you catch it at five cent or three cent. Yeah, I'm glad you made that disclaimer between a swing trade and a long-term hurdle because most people will just hear the sound bite and say, oh, they said to invest in Doge. It, I still don't know its use case. I don't, There's no I don't use think, case for it. I don't think anyone's going to find the use case. So it's tough to me to say like, okay, you should invest in that. Could you swing trade it and make money? Yeah, you yes. could. But trading has considerable risk. So make sure. Please consult your advisor. I know one by the name of Rashad Bilal. Trap, let me use your remix. <laughs> Don't touch Doge for the long term, please. Press clip that up. And Doge has no use case. It is the, the Takashi of all the tokens. Purely a troll. <laughs> troll no coin. use. The, yes. the troll, the troll. New, that's a new category. Troll, troll coin is fire. Coin. Amy, uh, can we go trademark that, please? <laughs> Somebody go on <laughs> The troll coin. So, all right, let's talk about this then. Um, what's the three biggest concerns in the market right now? Uh, number one, my biggest fear is if we do not go back to quantitative easing, that we're going to have probably a flat half of a decade. Whenever I'm asking people what can make the market go up, they're saying better economy, what could cause a better economy. There's no real answer. I think we, we're going through a revolutionary period the cycle that people don't like. Um, but if they don't start putting in some QE in 2024, 2025, I think things will be tight until the end of this decade. Um, number two, it scares me that they still won't officially announce that we are in a recession. And when anyone ever hot, so back in the day, like fourth grade, shout out to my mom and dad, I have my report card. I'm like, Miss Joe didn't release the report cards. I like would hold the information if things were really bad, right? So if they're withholding that we are in a recession and Bezos is saying it and Elon is saying it, and if Bezos is concerned with all those billions of dollars that we have to tighten our belts, what are the real numbers that we're facing? I think this thing is probably going to be bigger than 2008 because we've never had the bond market fall apart while tech was falling apart and the general market and GDP was falling apart. So, so um, shout out to Caleb Silver. Yes. He was at the VIP event yesterday and he, he, uh, he had a different take on it. He said that in his, in his opinion, yeah. he felt like um, the definition of recession isn't really relevant to today's times. Which wait, that sounds familiar to something I said three weeks ago. You guys remember this? And he <laughs> he he also, <laughs> I do. Okay. He, he also said that there's a variety of different factors that lead him to believe that it won't be as bad as some people. And what were some of those reasons for those who couldn't attend that amazing event? The vibe there was amazing. Oh, uh, by the way, the energy heavy on the yeah. energy. Uh what were some of the reasons? He said, well, if you, you look at GDP, you look at the uh, job market, um, obviously inflation. It's not as bad. He said the job market's not hit as bad. We said, like, these are the things, like, three ways ago, I read those statistics. I'm like, if the factors that usually equal a recession, like unemployment, 
right? Mm -hmm. Look at the level that unemployment is at, right? In a recession, that number is a lot higher. The factors that used to equate to a recession aren't equating. It's a different time. It's a different market. And I said it because I, I, I got to give credit to Josh Brown. I heard him saying it, and I was like, yo, I kind of felt that way. When I'm looking at these numbers, how come this doesn't feel like it? But by definition, and, and I'm glad that Caleb was there because Investopedia mm -hmm. is an amazing, probably the yeah, best Caleb. when we're yeah. talking about information. By definition, we are in one. But it doesn't feel like it. He also said that for some people, They've been in a recession for the past three to five years. They're just like, yes. oh, you guys are just now saying it. And for some, it's like, all right, well, it's business as usual. Yeah, we have to tighten our belt, but it's still business. So all the fact, like the the times have changed. So maybe the definition changes. Okay, so so back in the day when I was a dog and then like my girl would walk in and somebody was kissing on my neck at a party and I'd be like, baby, I wasn't even kissing her. She was kissing me. Shaggy rules. That's you know, what economists are doing right now. Shaggy. They're changing the boundaries and definition of what a recession is because people don't want to lose their jobs. Sad news for you. Or, You're about to lose your job, right? And they're trying to protect Biden from having that R word, that scarlet R on his jacket. Um, I agree with some points with Caleb says. I love I'm dearly amazing person. I when I talk to black people though, and I say, "Does this feel worse?" I see terror on our faces. My baseline, same thing with like uh, what you call it, the ear test of, of like something is hot. When I'm talking to people, if they're concerned or not, when quantitative easing goes away, even for businesses, it's not as easy for everyone to start a business. I'm seeing a lot of people trying to launch products now and services. And those first month launch numbers is not as good as they um, report to. Uh, let me say this. Okay. If we're not in recession, Meta fell from 300 down to 90. Amazon fell to the 90s. Square has fallen apart, which Jack needs to focus more solely on that company. These are the biggest companies in the world. They're going through recession. The average person is going to tell me that they're not hurting. Is Mark Zuckerberg Meta's not even a top 25 company anymore. Yeah, it fell. It fell. And the it average fell. black person is just balling. I don't even know if How? they're balling. They're not dribbling. They're not in the arena. If we're going to be honest, if the world's wealthiest people are hurting right now, as my grandma would say, it's all. all that, I, I, I'll challenge you to name a time when we were all in the arena. 1920s, 1930s. I mean, this like so you're talking about almost a hundred years. That's why I mean, obviously, this this moment in time mm -hmm. is is so significant and so important, and that's why, yeah, America is important. But that's why Europe is important to us. That's why we're here to spread financial rev the revolution. Absolutely, but we were never really in the arena. Not in my lifetime. Not in yours. Not in my parents. So that's what I said. Like some people, like we've been in recession, so we've uh, acclimated to the, really, the, the this circumstances. Really hard right now. And, and, and I, I got those two things. So Buffett has a indicator with the Wilshire. You guys can go look that up. We talked about it before. I have another Buffett indicator. On CNBC, when things are normally, the market is dropping, but things are doing well, him and Becky Quick normally sit down for three or four hours. You know this, Troy. And they'll sit in the grocery store in the library, and he'll tell you how the American economy is so great. And if you invest in the S&P 500, Stormy killed it yesterday talking about life insurance and the S&P. You'll get seven percent return. Buffett hasn't made a comment yet. Yeah, he's quiet. I got. I'll give you that. He hasn't made one single commentary about the market being fine. Why? He's doing the work. Carl Icahn hasn't said anything. Bill Ackman didn't do his speech that he normally does to like try and boost his stocks and his revenue at this time. All the major investors are quiet. It's spooky hours out here right now. So, um, I know some people say we may not be in a recession, but if we're going to read mix things and say that we're not and we're going to reframe them, then I want the kids to know me as Barack Obama. Then. <laughs> <laughs> if we're not telling the truth about what we are. I, I was I was the real James St. Patrick's then, if that's the case. Come on. <laughs> makes sense. Makes a lot of yeah. sense. Uh, all right. Let's get some social commentary before we leave. Elon Musk takes over Twitter. Whew. Shows up with a sink. <laughs> Plans on firing a lot of people. CFO, COO. Um, <laughs> drop censorship. 
immediately, first action, first thing that he did. Um, so some people have said that that have led to racism and mm-hmm. and racist things being said. 19 Key said he's actually a proponent for it because mm-hmm. uh, freedom proponent of speech. Proponent for what exactly? Freedom of speech. Um, he said his his Twitter has been more popping now than it ever was before. Um, Mine too, yeah. I would agree with that. So how do you feel about this? How do you feel about what he's doing um, right now? And uh, specifically about the, uh, I guess you call it freedom of speech situation. Um, if he doesn't fix this quickly, uh, Twitter will turn into the new 4chan. They do what? Uh, they, they'll turn into the new 4chan if they don't fix this. So, what 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 is there to fix? Like, explain. Some people might not be educated on exactly. What's you going you on. should not be. There should not be a five hundred percent increase in the use of N word after you buy in three days. Well, because 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 you can say it now. That's that's why it's a five hundred percent increase. Because yeah. yeah, I mean that's easy. Like if you let people say, it, of course, there's a lot of racist people and there's a lot of stupid people. And, just, and then there's some people that are just going to do it just to do it because now Absolutely. you're allowed. So you're allowed to say the N word with the ER at mm-hmm. the end, like the hard ER. Were you allowed to say the A before or no? Yeah, you can say the A. Like, you can say the A. You can, you can A always A. type. <laughs> you can always say the A, yep. right? But you couldn't say the ER, right? I, I'm, mm-hmm. I, yeah, is that true? Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, okay. only only rappers they always tweeting. I, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know this to be a hundred percent factual. Yeah. If anybody's in the chat that has a direct answer, but I'm assuming that you could always tweet a, mm-hmm. but you couldn't tweet er. Er. Now this, yeah, but but you are what you attract. So also, too, and I know people, a lot of people like somebody even messaged me like, hey, how can you repost something about Elon and he's a racist? Man, I don't want to go down this deep, dark hole, but if you're going to be honest, almost all of the big tech platforms have some sort of racism inside of the culture. I mean, all of almost the whole entire world. <laughs> so I think, if, if that was the deciding fact that we wouldn't we wouldn't be alive. I think he saw that and he actually tweeted about he's they're still going through the process of creating new guidelines for how Twitter is <laughs> going to operate. What those guidelines will look like, no clue. But the, the ER is crazy. I think that was a response to it. The ER is unnecessary. That's a fact. The A. I mean, if he wanted to stop it immediately, as quickly as he fired the CEO and CFO, he can stop it in one day. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, they, and they're going to start reactivating accounts that they w- were once suspended. So yes. that's going to be interesting too. The, the ER draft pick number one will be who coming to the or, stage? Our, our, our former former president, former president of the United States. Oh, be yeah. a Royal Rumble. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he's the first. He's back lit. Again. He's back lit. I mean, but freedom of speech is a, it's it's very very um tricky situation because like uh, your your favorite platform TikTok I hate them because no they take it too far and that that their AI system isn't good enough so they they yeah. delete our post all the time they and it's not even nothing to do with anything but. It could just be something that, like, like you know I'm saying, like that just is triggering something, and it's like, oh, this is inappropriate. I'm like, how is talking about a 30 year mortgage inappropriate? Like, you know what I'm saying, that happens to us all the time. And forget about trying to curse on TikTok. You can't say any curses. You can't play anything with curses in it at all. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're probably the most censored platform that I've ever seen, and that's a problem because it's like, all right, well, this is America. And it's not illegal to curse. It's not illegal to like, you know, so it's a thin line between. Is it illegal to curse in China in public? But that's the problem. We're not in China. We're in America. So but, but when you have a Chinese, Chinese company based, and that's the, and that's, why, the large, and that's why I always said. That uses it is here. And that's why I always said I don't trust TikTok. The Chinese have a horrible human rights record. They have a horrible um, history of oppression and not having rights for their citizens. You can look it up. It's well, it's well documented. Long story short, how do we balance that? How do we balance it, right? How do we balance free speech and hate speech? Because hate speech is detrimental and it's not positive. So of course we don't want to promote, we don't want to promote neo-Nazis. We don't want to promote racism, but how do you balance that with 
you know, hate speech or with um freedom of speech. Also, too, people have to remember that there are a couple segments that are not protected by free uh, free speech, um, defamation, fraud, and I predicted Kanye would get sued by the Floyd family. That is now true. Uh, child pornography, fighting words, or threats. So the just going off the incitement and the fighting words, because a racial slur technically is classified as fighting words. That's one main reason that should not be allowed on Twitter. But even that, see, that's that's when you start going down a rabbit hole. Fighting words. That's fifty percent of rap artists at one point in time have threatened another person, another artist. Some have even went on Instagram Live with each other, and and it's entertainment, it's banter. Their accounts never get shut down, and that's what Kanye was saying. That's what Ye was saying. I apologize for calling him Kanye. That's what Ye was saying, right? Where it's like, what is another hate speech? one who won't listen? What is like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, if you go on Apple Music, there's no shortage of songs talking about, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to do whatever to you when I see you. I'm going to rob you. This is a, a, this is a song detailing how to rob a rapper. Mm -hmm. Is that free speech? Is that nobody's ever said that that's an issue. I've never heard anybody say that that's an issue. Uh, people haven't been as vocal about it, but if you go back to even C. Dolores Tucker back. I mean, C. Dolores Tucker, say. that's a fact, but that was 25 years ago. I'm just saying it's not like a public. I, some people have voiced yeah. their, their, their mm -hmm. concerns about it, but I'm just saying it's not something that the powers to be have ever said. This is inappropriate. We can't have right. this, you know, so. Yeah. Also, with free speech, it doesn't give you the right to say whatever you want. I know everyone hasn't read that section, but it doesn't allow you to say whatever you want to on the street. And also, too, you have the right to free speech inside of your home, private establishments, or private clubs. It does not mean that you can say whatever you want to in the media or in public. Yeah, I think there's a difference, right? Free speech and then there's speech that has consequence, mm -hmm. right? And so, like, it's a fine line. It's a, it's a tricky line, right? Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, there are things that are being promoted and some things that won't be promoted by the people in, in charge. And like when the tech platforms aren't liable as well. So even with Parler, which Kanye kind of got baited at, well, into buying. Is that, also official? too, is that officially done? Uh, it's not done. I think it's still in the works. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I would... Homework assignment. Who ran Parler? What is their association with Candace Owens? Isn't it, <laughs> isn't it her husband? So now Candace backs away from, can we talk about finesse of the year? I'm going to stand with Kanye, me being Candace. He's going to wear the White Lives Matter. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I get him in yeah, trouble. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I get him in trouble and he changed his name legally so he wouldn't have to. So I will say that for another day. He wears the White Lives Matter. He gets in trouble. Candace loses nothing, gets her documentary promoted. Kanye, oh, yeah, excuse me, buys in the parlor. Kanye, uh, um, Candace backs away from Ye. If that's not a finesse, I don't know what is. Yo, your camera knew what time it was. It backed away from you. <laughs> it zoomed up. On <laughs> it zoomed that's up you one of the greatest <laughs> finesse moves. That's some Brooklyn Bronx ish right there. Like <laughs> you, Ye got lined up. Lined up. I'm going to destroy your career and stand next to you. But now you buy into this tech platform that. We couldn't get Elon and Trump to buy into. Now you bring value. Yo, you've you've got your your camera is super excited. It is zooming in and out on you. Um, yeah, I mean it's interesting, man. Uh, it's it's interesting what's going on with that situation, to say the least. Um, Hold on, let me fix this. Tough times right now for for yay for sure. Yeah, tough time for my tech. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He has issued an apology. I saw that. Um, to George yeah. Floyd's family. Yeah. And to black people. Yeah. I should apologize to you too after I got put on child support. He, uh, <laughs> Still gotta pay. <laughs> gotta pay. He, but he was very- He got vocal. apologized before. I, but after the apology, he reminded people of like when the tragedy happened. No, it was during the apology. It was, it was an Instagram post. Instagram. Yeah, yeah. It was an Instagram post. Yeah, I yeah. believe it was George Floyd's, I don't want to say the wrong information, but from yeah. my understanding, it was the mother of George Floyd's child. Correct. If I'm wrong, 
I apologize or somebody can correct me, but from my understanding, he had a picture of the mother of George Floyd's child and was saying how he was unhappy that he was being sued and how he gave $2 million mm -hmm. and nobody else gave any money. And he back, you know, he was there when the family needed him. And, um, you know, we said like, you know, they're doing a, a, um, a economic lynching of me, which is actually ironic because we had this conversation, but he said they're doing an economic, economic lynching of me yes. and their bank erupt me, their bank erupted me, uh, socially, all of this stuff that yeah, he's going through. Bankruptcy. And he was like, you know, now you're going to sue me for $250 million, pretty much saying like, that's not right. Like, it's not the right time to do that. Da, 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 da. And then he, but after he, lie. he apologized to the family and he also apologized to the black community. Um, Oh no, man. It's an unfortunate situation all the way around. Like, yeah. Everybody, everybody knows how I feel about Kanye, but uh, you know, it's just some things are just better left to be unsaid. Even if you have good intentions, sometimes it's just not, it's just, you know, you have to be tasteful and you have to be thoughtful with your words. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just the ways to handle different things. So, uh, it's a very unfortunate situation because, mm -hmm. you know, nobody, nobody wins in that case, right? It's like now, you know, they have to relive memories of their, their family getting, you know, killed, mm -hmm. murdered. He has to, you know, deal with this on his end financially, you know, see what happens with this lawsuit situation like that. So, and it could have been avoided, um, which is, you know, one of the reasons why you have to have good counsel in your corner. Cause we, you know, we all can make mistakes. We all can say things that we don't need, need to say, and then we can kind of double down on them out of pride, out of ego. And then, you know, you just start spiraling out of control. So sometimes it's just, it's just best to not say anything. And then if you do say something that you're not supposed to say, just, you know, correct it early on as opposed to doubling down, tripling down, and then trying to reverse engineer it on the back end. And now you have to go through legal lawsuits and all this different stuff of that nature. So it's a learning experience. I feel like Kanye's life is pretty much a learning experience, which is unfortunate, but um, you know, the ups and downs, everything that he's been through at the very least, it's on public display. So you can learn from it, no matter how you feel about it. No matter how you feel about it, what your take is, it's educational and you can learn from it. You can learn what to do. You can learn what not to do yes. from watching other people. And he is a perfect example of somebody that you can watch and learn a lot from on, on both sides of the coin. So, you know, that's that's my take on that whole situation. But it's an extremely unfortunate situation all across the board. It's a good lesson to only speak when you're when you know you are correct. Um, number two, to remove ego out of the situation and I, I can only imagine what he feels like because anytime I've gotten attacked I know how much it bothers me then of course Kyrie got drugged into it mm -hmm. um, by proxy shout out to the good brother um, but it's also the power of being quiet off of social media I know a lot of people want that spotlight and the fame there is risk that comes with that so number one you cannot lie so when he said that um george floyd died because of fentanyl if he would have just read the actual autopsy which would have taken him five minutes he would have seen that that is not true that's why i tell people even when people make claims and say um i feel this way about even us if now we haven't gone this route but if that claim is not true that is defamatory towards us and the brand you could sue for that and also in a recession, you have to be mindful that lawsuits go up 7x. Mm -hmm. When people are hurting, the game gets a little bit dirtier. Yeah, we, we so just saw that, right, right? With the, the Alex Jones trial, right? To almost, almost a billion. Yeah, up to a billion dollars in lawsuits. For a lie. Right. You got to be careful. You got to yeah. be careful. Yep. Safety. It's, thank it's god important. i never got found when i was creeping around life's golden rule is to think <laughs> life's golden rule is to think five times before you speak if you so think important. five times before you speak the odds of you saying something that is um you're going to regret goes down drastically so mm -hmm. think five times before you say anything and you s might have a chance of not saying anything that you regret. You still might say something that you regret, but at least you'll have more of a chance of not saying something that you regret. But whenever you just say something and then you have to add a different, a couple of different factors into that, as far as, you know, the mental health thing going on drink champs. I don't think that was the best choice being that, you know, you're, you're intoxicated that that never helps, you know, <laughs> no matter what element it is, whether it's weed or, or drinking and he's doing both. 
Um, so, I, you know, I, I don't think drink champs is the best place to have that kind of conversation because mm-hmm. you're already in an element where you're going to, you're going to say things that you, you're going to not probably be a hundred percent comfortable with later on when you're drunk and you're high. Yes. Um, so that's, that's a whole different conversation for a different day. But, you know, once again, learn experience, man. Don't don't speak without having full information. Don't speak when you're intoxicated. Mm-hmm. Don't speak when you're emotional. And really think about the consequences before you speak. Absolutely. Speaking of villainous characters, can we start a campaign and get Diddy to play the next Joker? Diddy, yeah. legendary, yeah, he, man. He, he, ran up he, he saw the dude ran up on him? He, yo, he dragged it on the floor. That was the hardest part of the whole situation. Say, you know who I am? I, 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 he was in character and he didn't realize dude wasn't playing. No, no, no. But do you know who I But then it changed. It wasn't even that. I'm, he even hit, like, you watch him. If you watch like, I'm love. If you watched it, and under under no circumstances was Diddy in trouble. Oh, no, I because never. If yeah. you watch the, um, the <laughs> video, shout out to Fahim. Fahim is the head of, of Diddy's sure. security. Fahim is like FOI. So yeah. we met Fahim through um, Revolt. He actually came to our show in Chicago. And he has a real estate crowdfunding platform as well. Yeah. He is on yeah. the court. Like, the dude's <laughs> right here. He is yeah. right here. Yeah, Did you yeah. see that part? Like yeah, yeah. he's like, yo, yeah. he's he he is he's literally, yo. I never see somebody so laser focused in my life. Like he's literally locked in yo, at any hand movement, any dude hand gesture. Yeah. If dude would have like his arms are folded any the whole time, hand gesture had his hands come down. Any hand yeah. gesture on his neck, but did he? That was so legend. Like he, the fact that he actually took on the character. He started scraping the floor. Yeah. No, he's like, different. at what point? He said, I'm love. Come on, brother, hug he me. Said, come to the after party hug and change me. your vibrations. Love. It's all love. Yo. He was fully in character. Yo, he hugged him as if he loved him. That's hard. That is so legendary. That was the highlight of the whole Good Halloween. mitigation and taking away ego. It could have went left. And did he could have jumped on? Nah, it, could, it couldn't have gone. Through. It no, won. it's not an option. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah. if his, he he was right in that stance, yeah. if his arms no came no, no down, and I'm saying did he did he could have set it off? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, he wouldn't he have had to use the situation. No, nah, he yeah. definitely defused the situation. But the way he no, did it, know. like that, he literally went in the full character of the Joker. That was legendary. All and night. Congratulations to Diddy because, uh, you know, publications. Mm-hmm. Who knows how they do this, but. Uh, he moved up the charts and he's a billionaire now. That is uh, true. He is so, on the billionaire boys list. Shout out to Burner. Bigger than that, my boy Burner, Burner. is 400, on the list. Four hundred million dollars yeah. net worth. We that was our latest episode of Assets Over Liability. Absolutely. Speaking of Assets Over Liability, yeah, I was gonna out, say yeah. Check out this week's show with my girl Milano. Philly, Philly. Hey. Yes, Milan Harris. She's killing the game right now. She's yeah, really, she really elevating the situation. Milano, yeah. super dope story, entrepreneur out of Philly. Um, y'all know the clothing brand. She's actually having a 10 year anniversary uh, next week, 10 years of business. Congratulations Shout to Milano. To her. So that episode is out right now on TV and then it'll be out on Wednesday on their YouTube channel. So yeah. shout out to Milano, man, but Milano shout, Harris. Yeah. Burn him, yo. That was, our, I mean, we knew it, right? Cause we spoke to him and obviously we can understand the business of it. But I'm sure when people saw his name on that list in front of Dr. Burner, Dre. Burner. A lot of people don't even know who Burner is, though. He's still, he's that's one of those crazy, that's, He's still like, even Terrence J, he's like, I, I never, I heard of Cookies, but yeah. I didn't know who he was. Shout out to Cookies. Burner they says. just opened in New York City. They just opened a store this weekend in New York City. What's out of town? I'm asking for the Panthers. <laughs> um, I got to ask my friends in the industry. <laughs> Shout out to Burner, man. Yeah, quite a I mean, and, and going back, what well, he did, what, 56 million in merch? Merch. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yes, brilliant. He's, 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 he's one of the ones, man. Yeah, he's he, one of the ones, man. And he's, he's a, super, cool, and super, super cool. humble, super, super cool, humble person. So I'm, I'm happy for him because he's actually a really good down to earth dude. And he beat cancer too, so that's a fact. He's a cancer survivor. Did you read the part on Dre, Doctor Dre? Yeah, about yeah. the. So they, it went into the details because everybody was like, Dre's a billionaire. Dre should have been a billionaire, but they were talking about if you looked at the details of the sale and how his percentage was really cut down. It cut like they have him at four hundred million now. That's a drastic difference from at one point being in that near billionaire. Um, Is that because of the like, divorce? I mean, I've, that had a lot to do with it. Well, she took two hundred. She got two hundred for that. 
whatever it was, it was, it was, <laughs> yeah. I mean, 400, 500, <laughs> whatever those, it was, those, it those was are big it. numbers. So, <laughs> congrats to everybody on this list. At what point <laughs> is a prenup mandatory? At what dollar amount? Uh, it was more we, we gotta have a real conversation. <laughs> Right. Mitigation you know, it's of risk. It's tricky because it's like, you know, you get married before you know that you're going to have 200 million or 500 million, then it's hard to really know, you know, and then it's like nobody's going to want to rework the deal. Like, oh, hey, okay, honey, uh, 10 years in, I'm a billionaire. I need you to sign this. Good luck doing that. And possibly mitigation of risk. Good luck well, doing well, that. Have to have a good I may have to get a lawyer on because boy. Defense. Defense is the best the offense. Championships. Yep. Doesn't Shout matter what you make, it matters what you can keep. That's a fact. Y'all put in the chat, at what number should it be mandatory? And this is for women as well. Prenuptials? For a prenup? Yes. Man, this is going to be a hot take. They're going to have all kinds of comments for this because people are like, it's never mandatory. Some people are going to be like, it's going to be mandatory at $1,000. I don't want a prenup. My thousand. I, want, I need that. I need 500. I ain't mad at them. <laughs> I need that. I need I all mine. Yeah, that. I, I need all automatic payments <laughs> off my balance sheet. I need that. Oh, but my oh, personal opinion on this, honey, we, honey, we can you. actually, we should actually bring a divorce attorney on at some point in time because it is a yes. very real situation. Even when I was a financial advisor, going through the Quadro system, like Quadro is when they actually like have the financial um situation when you go through a divorce and they break up your four hundred one k, they could break up your you know your IRA, uh, liquidate houses and stuff like that. Like the whole, there's a whole financial side to divorce, um, that not a lot of people are educated on the process until you actually go through it, but um. My personal thing about it is that, like, if you started with with nothing, and then the person ain't really help you build nothing, you don't really deserve too much. You deserve some level of, of compensation, especially if you have a child. But if you started with nothing and the person was like help very integral in helping you build whatever you've built, then that's a different story, right? Because that's yeah. kind of like your business partner. Even if they're not officially your business partner, if she was your secretary or if he was your secretary, if she, you know, whatever, if there was a tremendous amount of sacrifices made for your success, I feel like, you know, it's it's right to take that into consideration. And then there's another story where if you are already who you are, if you are already $100 million up or whatever, and you meet somebody, and they definitely don't have nothing to do with that, then you leave with everything you came with. In my opinion, that's yeah. how I'm looking at it. Cause it's like I I was already here before you. So you was who you was before you got here? You didn't help me get here. So why am I compensating you for coming when we already won the championship? Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's already it's already over. The game's already over. And you're trying to get like you just you you just started at the beginning. That's my take on it. But everything you have to get in writing, fellas and ladies <laughs> and even if you're living together, you have to have a living arrangement. Because that common law situation, depending on what state you, you are a part of or live in. Oh, seven years, you done. Seven Wait, years, you married. I thought it was, t- I thought it was 10 it in New York. It depends on what state. Seven. In I, Texas, I, it's five. I know, five. I know in California, it's, I think it's seven. Yeah, I thought Fellas, you, you, even with the wifey, if you legally tell an attorney, business partner, this is my wife and you guys are not married, that can be used in the court of law. Be careful what you say. Yeah, pick the right one. Has implications and pick someone that you're gonna build with. Pick a life Mitigate partner. Risk at all. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Pick pick a life partner. It, life is a lot easier when you got a life partner, not somebody that is just coming along for the ride, but actually is involved in all aspects of life, yes. making you better, you making them better. Unity, love. We gotta leave with that. Start with love. Like right? Diddy. Like, like Diddy. Yeah, we gotta love. leave with that. We, love, I'm, love, I'm love. I'm only love. doing love speech. That's all I ever do. Love. That's it. Love speech. So, like, when it comes to you know marriage and finances, those are conversations. But we gonna build something together. Maybe we'll build something separately. But it's all for the love of each other and for the family, right? The legacy. We talked about that yesterday. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Storm again. When we talk about legacy. It's not just me. It's not just my kids. It's my kids' kids because. They are part of your legacy as well. It takes right. a village. It takes a village, man. It's all, let's we gonna leave with love. Earn it takes your love. a village and good paperwork. Update your paperwork, fam. <laughs> it Don't takes, forget the paperwork. See something on the trail. <laughs> it's it all takes, fun to the lawyers get involved. It takes a village. Yes. Big love. Yeah. Um. Yes. All right. Well, guys. Uh. 
Let me give him some. Let me give him some. Let me just give him some real quick before we before we go. Uh, obviously, he's earnings. So we spoke about, and, and it's funny, Ian, you brought up Eli Lilly. They're going to be reporting, like I said, tomorrow. Uber is going to be reporting AMD. Whew, AMD. We've, we've been on a, a journey with them. Shout out to everybody that's still in their positions long term. Uh, Airbnb will be reporting. And Pfizer. That was the other the medical um, health care that I, I couldn't remember earlier. Uh, Wednesday, uh, Roku, Etsy, the... <laughs> <laughs> Etsy was, was was the pandemic, darling. Uh, and yeah. Fortnite, a uh, cloud uh, company, will be reporting on Wednesday. PayPal will be reporting another cloud. Uh, Datadog uh, will be reporting. And Block, formerly Square, will be reporting on Thursday. And then last but not least, of course, on, on Friday, uh, DraftKings will be reporting. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But tomorrow, you know what tomorrow is. Y'all know what tomorrow is? What is tomorrow? Tomorrow is November 1st. November 1st. And historically... And since 1950, okay. November has been the best best month to trade uh, in the stock market. It usually leads uh, in the best parts of the year to trade. So it usually averages about 2% increase uh, for the Dow uh, and starts that six-month trail uh, of, of good months. We'll see how that goes for tomorrow's November 1st and his midterm elections. And so I remember we spoke about that earlier um, a couple months ago about how markets move around midterm elections. Uh, so we're here. We, we shall see. We shall see. Yeah. Your okay. own inflation rate has risen to 10.7%. Wow. Yikes. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been real. I wish we could stay here all day with you, but we got history to make. <laughs> so <laughs> come join us on the See day. you on the other side. Market Mondays live at Madison Square Garden. If yes. you got a chance, to be in London, you understand how historic this whole situation was. If not, you'll be watching it on Instagram, you'll be watching it on social media, and you'll be inspired, because we're inspired. But don't miss Mark and Monday's Live. Please. Mark and Monday's Please. Live will be the one. Uh, 11, 27 at... Royal Albert Hall is calling. Okay, we're on our way. Okay. Ladies well... And gentlemen. <laughs> it's 11, <been> real. <laughs> 11 27 at Madison Square Garden, 7 p.m. All right, they're calling us, so we gotta go. We have, we have rehearsal. We have rehearsal. We have we, we have our sound chat before we go. We want to let you know about a great choice if you're looking to bake or invest. Ally is a leading di digital financial service company with passionate customer service, innovative financial solutions, and our relentlessly focus on doing it right for both customers and communities. So get with that life so you can save, invest, and spend on the things that matter most to you. For everything we need, we're all better off with an ally. Peace. To our allies in the UK. Shout out to Peace. allies. Love is love. Peace, y'all. Be good.